Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to read from uh, Luke chapter 24. Uh, we've been covering the period of time between the resurrection, which we call Easter, the resurrection and the day of Pentecost, which is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit and showing different, different things that Jesus did during that time. He just didn't, for some people I, I've said, you know, they come to church on Easter and then it's kind of see you by Christmas and they don't realize that in between, after Jesus rose from the dead, he ministered to the disciples for 40 days and he gave them instruction. Now, what we've been covering is how Jesus came to encourage the disciples. Now you think about this. These disciples, they've been following Jesus for three years, approximately three years, some say slightly more, maybe three and a half. But they've been following him for approximately three years, pledged their life to him, saw him do all these amazing miracles, said, Lord, I, if they try to kill you, we'll die with you, we'll die for you. Well, that didn't happen. They did try to, they did kill Jesus, but all of the disciples forsook him. They ran away, they forsook him. They didn't have what they needed inside to really um, seal their testimony with their life. Uh, so they all, they, they book shop. They, in the army we say pop smoke and they're gone. <laughs> that means you pop a smoke a grenade, it, it gives you cover and you sneak out the back somewhere, okay? So they all popped smoke, they were done. And so Jesus trained these people to reach the world and they had all totally failed him. He spent 40 days encouraging them and strengthening them. They had seen what they could do in their own power. They made a, a, a verbal commitment. They had made a physical commitment to Jesus. We'll follow you. They were following him. But when it came right down to it, they didn't have everything they needed inside, and they failed. Let me, let me tell you something. Failure is not the end. You... Uh, I look around, all of us have lived long enough to just blow it, once or twice anyway. Some of us are good at it, so we've done it a few more times. <laughs> okay? Um, failure is not the end. Don't let your past become your life sentence. It was just there as a lesson. God can forgive sin, forgive our past sins and mistakes, okay? I make sure that I say sin. I, wanna, I want to really, I try to just be plain Jane in my ministry, in, in preaching. Because it's like so many preachers, I listen to a lot of preachers. I, um, I don't have a lot of ministerial fellowship. So there are certain ones that I listen to that are really good teachers, Bible-based and different things in my own studies. But it seems like so many people are afraid to just say sin. <laughs> it's like they don't, you know, hey, sin is sin. Jesus will forgive your mistakes. Well, the mistake is Naomi, she doesn't know she doesn't get a spanking for mistakes. The child is playing around and spills the milk. That's a mistake. That, that doesn't uh, call for corporal punishment. But when they look at you and go, oh, we need to talk. It's the same with God. 
It's the same with God. God, I tried and I, I made a mistake. God, I was doing my best and I failed. Yeah, God, no. But when it's just like, I know what you want, God. You want me to walk right down there. I know you want me to walk right down there. That's a sin. That, that open rebellion. And we shouldn't be afraid. It, you do people a favor when in love, you just talk plain. Talk plain. And so they had blown it. They had sinned. They had totally lied against God, lied to God. And, and, and they, they would not have been able to carry the gospel message of hope and peace and victory and joy in the condition they were in. Jesus came to encourage them. We spent a lot of time about, uh, with that. And now we want to get into the, the part where Jesus told them that they need to receive the Holy Ghost. Okay? John, uh, Luke chapter 24, verses, uh, beginning to read in verse 42. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses. That's the first five books of the Bible. And in the prophets. That's most of the rest of the Old Testament. And the Psalms concerning me. The Old Testament is filled with Jesus. The Old Testament is filled full of Jesus from Genesis all the way to uh, Malachi, uh, Malachi if you're Italian, uh, all the way through the Old Testament. It is, it is filled with Christ. And Jesus said, Jesus said that everything that was written concerning me must be fulfilled. Now one, that gives us, that gives us the right to have faith in all of the Old Testament because it spoke of Christ, okay? Verse 45, Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. And you know what? Let's pray for this service. Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you will open our understanding today. Even me, dear God, many times while I'm ministering, it's like you're teaching me new things. While I'm speaking in my head, you're teaching me what to say. It is an a absolute miracle going on. And God, I want you to open my understanding and everyone that will listen now or listen later online, dear God, we ask you, open all of our understanding that we may know you. Lord, our world is in a mess. And man, in all of their wisdom, they are fulfilling Romans chapter 1, Lord, where you said, professing themselves to become, to be wise, they became fools. Lord, we need your understanding. We ask you right now. And Father, as we do every time I pray, and I take authority over every evil spirit, every lying spirit, every deceptive spirit, every lazy spirit, every unclean spirit in the name of Jesus, every spirit of Jezebel that would come against your word and come against the kingdom of God, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the eyes of everyone's understanding be enlightened. For your glory we pray, amen and amen. I forgot to say, I was busy, there's a lot going on this morning, and then Asher, he has this thing against sleep. I don't know what's wrong with him. I'm going to remind him of it when he's a teenager, though. <laughs> uh, but when I finally looked at my phone sometime this morning, it was a mess little message from Pat. He said, Arlen, today is the day, and uh, he's being baptized today. As, as a confession of his faith, he's being water baptized at the church that he goes to over in Everett. And so we're excited. We're, we're excited. He's excited too. So uh, 
That is a, uh, that is a real blessing. So Jesus opened their understanding in verse 45 and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. Why was it necessary that this happen? Well, because it was the only way our sins were going to be forgiven. It was necessary that Christ die for the whole world and that he rise again. Uh, a lot of people, they, they were thinking, even the disciples, they were under, they were following Jesus, but they were under their old mindset, being raised as Jews. They believed Jesus was their Messiah, but they didn't believe the scriptures, like in um, uh, uh, Psalms 22. Have you ever read Psalms 22? Whoo! Everybody goes to Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Well, the Lord couldn't be your shepherd unless there was a Psalms 22. And it describes the sufferings of Christ probably more than any other portion of the Bible. Isaiah 53, all of these scriptures, they, they overlooked. When you are set in religion, when you are set in religion, so often your mind is shut to the Holy Spirit. I'm not against religion that glorifies God. And if you were raised in some certain religion, uh, I, I, I'm not against that as long as it, it did something. A lot of people raised in a strict religion it at least kept them out of a lot of trouble as a teenager. Praise God. Okay? Well, all I was was I was just in fear of going to hell. Well, if it kept you out of the bar rooms and the... Uh, uh, beds of adultery and fornication and all of that, then praise God for your fear of hell. Okay, but you need to learn to love Jesus. Okay, but they had uh, a Jewish religious mindset and their Messiah was going to come and save them, but they didn't understand it was a spiritual salvation. They thought it was a physical salvation. Our Messiah is going to come. He's going to be a mighty warrior. He's going to defeat all our enemies and make everything easy for us. <laughs> everything easy for us. Amen. Thank God for trials. Amen. If... Um, we, we, don't, we don't want everything easy. But that's what they wanted. And so when their Messiah, who they believed was the Messiah, was, was uh, taken, uh, spit upon, mocked, beaten, scourged, and hung on a cross, it just blew their mind. When it shouldn't have, because the Bible actually spoke of that in different places that that would happen. Even in Isaiah, and in, in, in Zechariah, Near the end of the Old Testament, it's, God prophesied and said, there will be a day that Israel will look upon him whom they have pierced. And they will say, where did you get those wounds in your side and in your hands? And he'll say, in the house of my friends. And then uh, that goes into a whole big teaching that I love to teach, but we're not there right now. That's not where we're going, okay? I don't want to get... Uh, all the way down there. He said in verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. A lot of times those things are not preached. Any, everybody wants to get to dessert. Okay, I'm thinking about giving my life to God. What will God do for me? It's like, like they want to come to God like interviewing a job. Okay, do I get this time off? Do I get to keep this habit and this habit and this habit? Uh, do I get to, you know, what, what uh, are you going to increase my pay? Um, uh, let's discuss this now. That's, that's not coming to God. Jesus said, he's telling these people that are supposed to carry the gospel around. And they were supposed to preach repentance and remission of sins. That's what the pe that's what the world needs to hear. Because once you realize 
I need my sins forgiven because I'm a sinner and I need to repent, which means to have a change of mind, but also a change of direction. Okay, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm, I'm angry, 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 and I, I, I put my gun on, and I'm ready to go just pop someone in the head with it, and I'm headed, headed for the door, God's not going to help me if I'm saying, Lord, I know this is a sin, forgive me, but I keep walking that way. No. God, I know this is a sin, forgive me. I repent, and I'm not going to do it. That's repentance. And that's what people need to hear. That's, that's what people, people need to hear, that we have to repent. Jesus' first message, it's, it's there in Matthew. He came preaching, saying, repent. Before that, John, John the Baptist came preaching. He said, repent. The first message from the apostles after Jesus rose from the dead, Acts chapter 2, Peter said, repent. And so today, but so many people are looking for uh, 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 a pizza. You need to eat pizza. <laughs> come, come to our church. Come to our church. Uh, we'll make you a latte. We will. We'll make you a latte. Oh, and you want popcorn too? And what? Oh, you want you want steak and lobster okay let me make a phone call okay hey there's one person wants to come they want steak and lobster so you know make some steak and lobster sunday morning so they'll come here <laughs> preacher if i come to this if i come to ch this church what will i hear repent for the remission of your sins amen that's love <laughs> That's love. How many, how many children, how many children would not be in jail today if someone, someone told them, okay? Um, my stepdaughter, she was probably about eight. Yeah, I think she was probably about, no, she was more than that. She was probably 10. And she's playing with something in a builder square. And I don't know if anyone remembers those old builder uh, there's a builder square. It's kind of like Home Depot now, but uh, that type of store. And she was playing with something. I went and paid for what I needed. She walks out with it. And we're in the parking lot. And she, she realized she had stole it. Well, I put my stuff, our stuff away that was paid for. I walked her back in and had her tell the person. And she's in tears, and she's not going ballistic, but she just realized this is really wrong. I said, you, now you need to tell them you, you took this out of the store without paying for it. I don't think she's ever stolen anything else. <laughs> that was traumatic. It wasn't harmful. I, it wasn't, I was disowning her. Daddy loves her. How many children would not be in jail or would not be in a grave if parents said, that's wrong? If the community would say, that's wrong, you can't do that. That's not right. God is not pleased if you do that. So many people are sold on this. Oh, God loves you with an unconditional love. Well, yeah, there are people in hell God loves. God still loves them. His love doesn't change, but he doesn't love what we're doing. <laughs> Amen? It's like the man who came to D.L. Moody and was kind of uh, uh, probed the, the, the revivalist, the preacher in the 1800s, and said, preacher, and, he, and he, they knew each other because they lived near each other, and, and Moody was the preacher, and he was the, bar, uh, the owner of the bar. And he, he, said, he said, Mr. Moody, God loves me. And Mr. Moody said, politely said, yes, but he hates your business. What a blessing. I don't know the outcome, but the man could go away. <laughs> the man could go away and realize maybe he'd go away and read Habakkuk where it says, woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink.
Repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. When I was, when I was living my own life, God loved me, but he hated a lot of my business. <laughs> he hated a lot of my business. He hated a lot of my thinking, a lot of my... Amen? Has, has anyone read in the Bible where it says, and God hates? Yeah, I went, okay. I, I was, I was, and there, there are some, maybe you've never heard it. So I read it to you, because I don't want to preach, I don't want you to, anyone to just walk away and say, God doesn't hate anything. Uh, Proverbs chapter, chapter 6, verse 16. These things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Now notice it doesn't say these six people does God hate. Okay. It says these things doth God hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. God doesn't hate the person with the proud look. He hates the proud look on the person. Okay. A proud look. Verse 17, a lying tongue and hands that shed innocent blood and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief, a false witness that speaketh lies and he that soweth discord among brethren. There are things, God is love, but God, there's stuff God hates. <laughs> That's pretty serious, isn't it? So if I'm doing something God hates, he loves me, but he hates what I'm doing. And that means he's going to work with me to change because he is love. And what I'm doing will lead me to hell. And God wants to take me to heaven. Amen? Okay. To receive the faith to be saved is a gift from God. I want to establish some facts here. I'm back in Luke chapter 24 or going through some things. First, Jesus, when, when he's dealing with the disciples here, the first thing the Bible says, he opened their understanding. Jesus opened their understanding. This is paramount in serving God. When I first started seeking God, I was just afraid of hell. I just knew I was under the deep conviction a person that lived like me is going to go to hell. And I still believe that. That's why I don't live that way no more. Okay? I allow God to work on me, and I don't want to do things. That I was doing a lot of things God hates. That's just one scripture. There are others. Okay. And I was just afraid of going to hell. I didn't want to go to hell. Fear is a good motivator, but it's not the best motivator because you can overcome fear. Like um, you can be afraid of, you know, something. But once you've been around it for a while, your fear lessens. It subsides. Okay? When I, when, when I was training in the, in the military, I was a tank system mechanic. The tanks, the tanks uh, back then, combat ready, I think they were 56 tons. And the recovery vehicle that I drove was 62 tons. We called it 62 tons of fun. When they were training us to work on the tanks, recover the tanks out of mud, and do all of these things, we're, we're driving these, you know, things as big as bulldozers. And they told us, and they were trying to put it in our mind, because people die handling this stuff, just like people die in the woods, logging trucks, skidders, all of this stuff. This is what they said. It's not the private that, get, that, that gets, gets in an accident or gets killed. 
it's usually the E6, uh, E5 or E6. That's someone that's been in eight to 10 years usually. The private is just afraid of this monster pile of metal with a big engine in it that makes it go fast. But the E5 and E6, they've been around it so long. All, all it has to do when you're hooking up, hooking up a tow bar or something and things not done right, if, if 62 tons just touches you like that against 56 tons, guess what? Yeah, there's not much left of you. And so, God wants us to be tender-hearted. He opened up their eyes. He wanted them. He wanted them to see. Fear was a good motivator that brought me to Christ, but somewhere in there I got saved, and, and God opened up my eyes. He not only he not only saved me from a bunch of sins, but he helped me and showed me why I needed to get out. <clears throat> if your testimony is, I, I go to church because I don't want to burn in hell. Well, hopefully that's not a 40-year-old testimony. That's not my testimony anymore. My testimony is, I, I go to church because I love God and I want to hear his word. I want to be around his people. I want to be a, around like-minded people uh, that, are, that, that love God and want to go to heaven too. He opened their understanding. Jesus said, we, we need to get to a place where we love God. Amen. Because we do what we love. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We, we, do, we do what we love. Okay, uh, John chapter 6, verse 44. Jesus said, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And I will raise him up in the last day. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. But call to remembrance, I'm referring to this scripture where Jesus opened their understanding. I'm, I'm explaining it with scripture. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 32. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, ye endured a great fight of affliction. He opened their understanding. Jesus said, no one can come to me except the Father draw him. In Hebrews, it's Paul's referring to, or the writer of Hebrews referring to when they got saved, he called it, you were illuminated. Basically, that means there was a time the lights turned on. Click. <laughs> the, lights, the lights turned on. This is, this is what happened to the disciple. God turns the lights on in your heart and in your mind. And it's... It, it's no longer God trying to slap bad habits out of you, <laughs> out of your hand. You know, stop this, stop this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, okay? There's a lot of things God hates for his children to do, and he's trying to get us out of them, okay? I mean, just look. The things that destroy the sinners, they, they des destroy anybody in church, out of church. And so... And so God uh, didn't have to just slap a bunch of bad habits out of my hand. God turned my mind on. He turned the lights on in my mind. And it's like, duh. Things I've been doing all this time, it's like God opened my mind. And it was like, you know, you just have one of those moments like, duh. Look at this. And God let me see the road that I was walking. And I despised that road. I loathed the road. I didn't despise all my buddies, all my friends that were still doing the things God was pulling me out of. They're, they're my, they're, they're, there are some people here I still call brother. 
I introduced my daughter to one guy said that they called him uncle. I don't despise them. I've just made different choices and I believe it's led of God. Jesus, this is what, this is salvation. God opens the mind. He said in Hebrews, he said, after you were illuminated, that, that word there is, and, and the same with, uh, he opened their understanding. The same thought is, basically it's a biblical or ecclesiastical term to enlighten spiritually, to endue with saving knowledge. Do you know if you've really given your heart to God, you don't have to be convinced you really gave your heart to God. Someone is always, oh, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. And you prop them up. And, and then next week, oh, I don't know if I'm saved. I don't know if I'm saved. And brother, uh, you're probably not. <laughs> Just tell them. <laughs> and do you know what? There are times I've re-prayed for salvation. It's like, God, I can't believe I'm doing this. God, just forgive me. I need saved. I need washed in the blood all over. Cleanse me up again. I'm not talking living in doubt, but I'm, I'm, I'm talking, man, if I'm going to develop these things again, God, I don't want, I don't want to go back. I, I just love, love Jesus. I love my heavenly father. I can go to him and cry. I can go to him and pout. I can go to him with the boo-hoos. I can go to him with complaints and moans and groans. I can go to him with depression and, and, and fits of anger. And uh, He's my daddy. He's Abba, Father, my Father. My, I, I still mess things up down here. I'm still in this flesh like the rest of us. I still can mess things up, but I know who my father is. I know who my daddy is. And I know his heart. I Man, I'm thinking of the prodigal son. He blew it big time. He wasted his substance in riotous living and ended up among the pigs. But in his heart, he knew. It, the Bible said there's a time. It fits right in with this. It said he came to himself. He was in a far country. He was living high on the hog. He was buying drinks for everybody. He was just a party animal, had lots of money, but his inheritance ran out. And he was starving to death, and he had to join himself with, with a, 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 a pig farmer of the country. And they sent him to feed the pigs. And he wanted to eat the, the, the husk that the pigs were eating, but they wouldn't let him do it. They, he was so starving. He wanted to eat the pig's food, but they wouldn't let him eat the pig's food. That's how it is. You live in the world, and, and you're not as important as their pigs. You're not as important as, important as their pigs. Could you let her in, Joyce? I don't know if those doors are unlocked. You're not as, you're not as important as, as their pigs. But the prodigal son, the prodigal son, um, oh, you could just set that there. Thank you so much. Yeah, you better say hello to your mama there. <laughs> you, you, the, the prodigal son, he's in such, I mean, you just think about it. It's, I think everyone here has probably fed pigs. Most people I know, I'm looking around, probably dealt with pigs one time or another. I mean, there's nothing sweet about it except eating the bacon, okay? <laughs> but, whoo, all the rest of it is pretty rough. He had it in his, in his hands and, ah! He was so low. But the Bible said he came to himself. Thank you again. Tell your husband thank you. He came to himself. He had a sober thought. 
And he said, how many hired servants of my father have food to spare? And I perish my, with hunger. And he said, I will arise and go back to my father. And he had this speech. He said, I'm, I'll go back to my father and I'll, I'll tell my father, I've sinned against thee. I've sinned against Kevin. I'm not worthy to be called your son. And uh, I just give me a job like a hired servant. But when he, this is the, the speech that he had. But when he's coming back to the father, the Bible said the father saw him afar off. The father was my son, my son. And the, the illustration is we are all the prodigal son in the pig pen and the father there is God. And God, God saw his son afar off and he came running. Someone made a song, uh, I wrote a song. It's called The Only Time I Ever Saw God Run it was when he ran to me. And he came and he grabbed his son and embraced him and kissed him. And the son's trying to say, Father, I'm... but the father wouldn't even let him finish his speech. The hired servants, I guess they were, man, what's the master doing? And the hired servants must have ran out there with him. Because he turned to the, turned to the servants. He said, go get the best robe. And give him the ring. That's a signet, the, the family signet. And put shoes on his feet. No shoes was a sign of poverty. That's how God accepts us all. Oh, that we would let God open our minds. Jesus opened their understanding. You know, how, how dirty do, do, do we get? I, mean, I don't know about you, but even as a preacher, and I'm not talking, I go cheat on my wife. There's a lot of things in my life that are, that are done. You know, I don't, I don't do that. I'm not doing drugs by God's grace. I'm not, uh, I'm not getting drunk, okay? I'm, I'm not doing drugs. I'm not cheating on my wife by God's grace, okay? All right, but just... Attitudes. Do you, do you guys ever deal with attitudes? <laughs> yeah, in my wife or in my husband. Uh, no, I mean you, your own attitude. Huh? Maybe ask God to help you and you might start smelling the pig pen next time you get an attitude. <laughs> oh, I got to deal with this Bradeen fella. Father, I need you so much. I need you so much. These disciples that had totally blown it went against everything they said they would do. Jesus is there. I, I don't know how it went if he just went like that. I, I don't know. You know, we got crazy ideas. But he just opened their understanding and they just saw it. He did have to die for us. You didn't come to make us rule over the Romans. The Romans aren't our enemy. Our enemy has never been external. Our enemy has always been internal. That fallen nature that we receive. God help us. We need to understand that. I'm not getting to the Holy Spirit part, but I think that's where we need to let God open your understanding this morning and understand how much he loves you, okay? You say, well, I got a big list. Well, write it all down on a piece of paper and show it to God, and then underneath it, write the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus. The song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Why don't you just thank God right now for the blood of Jesus Christ. God, we are so thankful for the blood of Christ that washes away all our sins. Oh, dear God, thank you for your saving power, your saving grace. Dear God, thank you when that old Bradine tries to climb out of the I climb out of the tomb with all of his stink and all of his bad ways and evil ways and evil thoughts and revenge. God, thank you, dear God, that you can open, you have opened my understanding and you by the Holy Spirit continue to open the eyes of my understanding that I may see, dear God, You've forgiven. You have cleansed me. You have washed me. And God, you are perfecting me until the day I look upon you face to face. You will be perfecting me and working on me. I'm not better than any human being that ever lived. In this flesh, I have the ability to do all the evil that anyone has ever done. But in the spirit, dear God, you give me authority over the flesh, over sin, and you give me the free gift of salvation and justification and righteousness through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you.